Greetings hobbyists and welcome to another Blender Basics video. All of these videos are designed for people relatively new to Blender looking to get a grip on exactly what this powerful program can do. And we'll cover all the elements that you need to know to get started including things like navigation, manipulating objects and all those tools that you need to achieve the results you're looking for. We'll do this in a series of short videos so they're all clearly labelled so you can easily search for them. And in each video we'll cover the bare basics while going on to things that are slightly more advanced so that as you continue on your journey through Blender you can improve the way that you use these different elements. And in this video we're going to be covering the basic functions of object mode. So object mode is the standard mode you'll enter Blender in if when you've got your splash screen you've clicked general or you've just clicked off of it. And the basic purpose of this is to allow you to create new objects or orient your objects in relation to each other by affecting their size, rotation and position. So we're going to cover each of those elements briefly and as always we'll throw in a couple of tips and tricks and we're going to start with one tip straight away which is that if we've got this object it's not very clear to see and we want to make this more obvious and I've mentioned this in a previous video but we're going to come to our viewport shading we're going to turn on our cavity and we're going to change that type to both and then we're going to up the valley the ridge in the world space and screen space so that these are more easy to see when we're looking at our objects. Now just in case you do want to take your viewport settings further this is how I have my viewport normally set up and if you watch my other videos that aren't the Blender Basics videos this is what you'll see. I typically have the red mat cap with the cavity turned on and then if I duplicate this object you can see that I have this set up so that any active object is blue and any that are selected are green and this works the same on vertices and you can see I have my vertices larger than standard and this follows the same pattern. Now if you are interested in taking your viewport a little bit further I've got a video linked in the description that, that talks through all of the settings that I've changed to create it like this and it really doesn't take long to do and I think it's a much easier way to work making things a lot clearer. So that's there in the description should you want to do that. Now with that covered let's start manipulating some objects. Now the first thing we're probably going to want to be able to do is add or delete objects so we'll deal with that one at a time. To delete objects we can do that in three ways. The first is with your object selected so you just need to click on it. You can hit object and then come all the way down to delete which is slow and tedious. The other options are if we select this light we can either hit the delete key which will delete it automatically or we can select an object, note we can select it by clicking on it or by dragging onto it in the standard mode and hit the X key and that will give us the option to delete our object as well. We can also add in objects, the slow version is again from the menu, add and we get all the options of the different objects that we might want to bring in, for example we could bring in a cube, let's just delete that quickly or Again the quicker way is with a shortcut and to do that we press shift and A and that brings us the add menu and we can bring in a cube that way if we want to. The other thing we can do is if we've got an object that we already like and we want another copy of it we can just duplicate it by object, duplicate object or and you'll notice it always tells us the shortcut by it we can just use shift and D and that will create our duplicate object and we are already moving it at the point where we've duplicated it click and you've got it in its position. That leads us nicely on to moving objects around so let's cover the grab function. So we can do this in two ways again and this is true for all of our different options for either grabbing, rotating or scaling which is what we generally do in object mode. To grab we just hit G and we can move something around. R will rotate it and it will rotate in the direction that we are facing so for example this is not very specific we want to undo it we can hit ctrl and z again there's edit and undo if you want to do it the slow way and if you want to rotate something very specifically in a certain direction you can use your gimbal as we have done before to come into a direct side on view R and you can see the amount that we're rotating it in the top left hand corner now let's say we wanted to get this to 45 degrees that's going to be very tricky or that was pretty close actually but to be more specific if you hold down shift while you're moving around this will then reduce the size of the increment that we're moving by which means we can be much more specific. Click and you've confirmed it. The other thing we can do is as we're rotating if we hit down control that will snap in increments of 5 degrees which again is quite a nice quick way of doing things. And all of our rotations are always from the point where we left it. So let's click and confirm that. The other thing we can do 
is when we're rotating or grabbing or scaling when we come to it, is that when we're doing that function, you can always also just type in the number that you want, for example, 45 degrees there. Notice that we're doing this now with the view that we're looking at. Hit enter or click and we've got that rotated by that amount. That's Control and Z to undo that. Finally, we have the scale function. Hit S and you'll just scale everything up and it will scale uniformly on all axes. And as you do something to allow it to just work on one axis, we'll cover that in a second. Now, as well as those shortcuts, there is another way of doing all of these and that is with these options on the side in our T panel. It's called the T panel because pressing T will make it go away or come back. And in the T panel, we've got each of our different options. We've got a move tool, a rotate tool, and a scale tool. And you'll notice each of those comes with this nice little display that makes it easier to do it in certain directions, though it's perfectly easy to do it in other ways in one direction. As I say, we'll come to that in one second. And we can just move things around or rotate them on certain axes. And you'll notice that if you've got the rotate tool, that we get this white circle as well, which is to use our current view we undo that whereas all of the colored axes correspond as we'd expect and then finally we have scale which is showing everything using instead of an arrow this line with a cube on the end and again we can scale in just one axis should we choose to the other thing that the move and the scale tool have here are these planes of color for example we can see the red green and blue ones and what they'll do is allow us to complete that function using everything but the axis in the colored plane for example if you want to move but not on the x-axis we can click the red panel and you can see blender brings up this green and blue axis where the object originally was to correspond to the axes that we're moving in the other option here is that we do have a transform tool which effectively has all of these in one go. So we've got our arrow for moving, our box for scaling, and then our circle gimbals for rotating. Now I will say while these look quite nice, I don't find them that useful, as you're very likely to quickly get used to using shortcut keys. If you do really like those tools showing in that way, feel free to use them. There's nothing wrong with them. They're there for a purpose. But personally, I find it easier to just move things around with, for example, the G key. And then if you want to lock it on a certain plane, you can just hit that key. For example, if we want to lock on the X axis, we just hit X and now we're moving in the X axis. And with the Z and the X key very close to our fingers and the Y not that far away, this is relatively easy to use. The other thing that we can do, let's just press S to scale this time, but it's exactly the same functionality, is we can hold down the middle mouse button and that will allow us to go in just one axis as well. And you can see this is controlled by this white line. Whichever of the axes this white line gets closest to is the one that you are locking it to. And if you ever let go of the middle mouse button, you stay locked in that axis until you get to the size that you want, and then you click. So the middle mouse button is a really good shortcut for this. It's one that I really wanted to mention in this video because I didn't find out about that until I was maybe a year into using Blender. And by that point, I'd got all these other habits and I very rarely use that as a tool and I really should do. The other thing that we can do finally that I want to mention is we can do that similar trick of only working in two axes or well, not working in one of them. And that is if we, let's say, press S and start scaling, if we hold down shift and then click whatever axis we don't want to function in, so I'll hit Z, this will scale in all of the other axes except for the Z axis. And that works exactly the same with moving. So if I press G and then shift on Y, we're moving in the X and the Z axis, but not the Y axis. So we've got a lot of different methods of control there. So we can start creating new objects and rotating them or scaling them or moving them to create the basics of whatever scene or object that we were interested in. The final thing that I want to cover here is just something that I think it's very important to mention. We're just gonna use this cube to cover this. Now, this is something that often doesn't get mentioned in beginner tutorials, and I think it's really important to mention this, just because it can cause some overlap and problems in what we're gonna cover in our next video, which is edit mode. So what I'm gonna do is just S and then hit the Z button to scale this just on the Z axis. I'm gonna scale this in quite an extreme way to make this column-like object. Now, then I'm gonna shift and D and we'll just press X to lock that on the X axis and move it over here. And we'll talk about this issue. And that is that when we scale, 
we're doing something that is slightly hidden in the background of Blender. And that is that Blender keeps the scale recorded for our object. And if we hit N and bring out this N panel, you can see that we have the scale information for this cube. And while we've got the dimensions here, the scale is how much this has been scaled on each of these axes. And we can see the X and Y hasn't been scaled at all. It's still on one, but the Z we're at 8.302. Now this doesn't seem to be much of an issue until you get into certain functions of Blender, for example, beveling. We're gonna cover beveling in the next video when we talk about edit mode and some of the common functions within edit mode. But just for now, I'm gonna tab, which will bring us into edit mode and hit two, which brings us into edge mode and allows me to select this edge. And when I do that, we can do something called a bevel. And if I press control and B, we will start beveling, but you'll see this is a really weird looking bevel. It doesn't look very good, it's very elongated. And it's specifically elongated a bit more than eight times on our z-axis because it's scaled to be eight times greater on our z-axis and Blender pays attention to that when doing things like beveling. Now, because of that, whenever we scale, at least as a beginner, I would recommend that you always press Control and A, which brings up our Apply menu. You can also get to this in the Object menu where you have Apply just here. And whenever we use the scale, I suggest that you apply the scale, which will bring everything back to one. If we tab into this one now, and in edge mode, select this edge and press control and B, we get a much nicer bevel at exactly 45 degrees. And if I scroll up on my mouse wheel, we can create a nice curved edge. I'm gonna go back to just one segment here, which is referred to as a chamfer, and then click. Now to do that, we have to have applied the scale Otherwise, Blender will get confused thinking that we've scaled up, but we want to maintain that scaling on the bevel. And for most uses, this is what we're gonna want. So I'd always control an A and apply the scale. On another front, what I'd not recommend you do, if you see when we had some other options, is apply the rotation. If I just R and then Y and rotate this round, you can see that we have our rotation information also in our end panel. But the reason I say to not apply the rotation is that if I want to move this, for example, and I will specifically want to move it in the direction that I was scaling up earlier, which at that point was the z-axis, I can do that by using what's called the local axis, which means the axis of the object, even though it's been rotated. So I could press G and then Z, which would normally be on the z-axis. And if I hit the same key again, so Z again, we now start transforming on that local axis, or we could press X and then X to transform on that axis. And the same thing is true of scaling, so I can S, X and X and scale just on that axis. So just to recap that, I'd always recommend that you control an A and apply the scale, but do not apply the rotation unless you want to lose that ability to use your local axis. Likewise, don't apply the rotation scale because it applies both, or all transformations as it applies the rotation, the scale and the location. And there's very few reasons to ever want to do that. But there are some as always, they just apply to specific situations. I just wanted to cover those because it's something that can cause people problems later on. And I don't want you to have to go hunting around for that information when it seems relevant to include that here. As I said, the next video in this Blender Base 6 series is gonna be looking at edit mode and some of the more commonly used functions within that. So I hope to see you for that video and have a great day.